Hello, my name is Alan Smith. I'm going to give a brief overview on some of the basics of the motor sizing tool. I'm using version 1.4. This is available off the Omron website. Let's just start. New full project. And in these fields, we can fill in various parameters to describe the project we're going to be working on. So the aim of this tool is to work out and show the different options you can pick for servos and servo motors from the Omron range. So let's, let's make up a, um, a simple project. Machine information, um, we can pipe in here a, a simple picture, we can import in pictures if you want of the, of the um, unit. Let's go for a filling machine, so a little turntable. What this is uh, doing, uh, I say let's have a turntable. Any particular controllers we're using, you can feed in here one of the Omron uh, Sysmac NJ or NX series. And um, it defaults to the generic rotary axis that we selected, but there's a number of them that we can pick from the tool. And there we have a, a simple picture indexing wheel, six pockets, servo, and there could be a gearbox underneath. The screen now is getting a little bit more populated. On this side, we have the um, description of the machine and the number of axes that you might have, one or more axes. When I click into these areas, then different um, drop downs and screens pop up for me. So this particular axis, Double click and it automatically populates the top portion of the screen with the drive chain. Let me just make that a little bit bigger with this icon. That's now showing me all these icons represent uh, the motor. And the bottom left hand pane now populates with the details of this of this motor. We've not picked one yet at the moment, so the the data is blank. Next icon here is representing a gear reducer, gearbox. Next icon is representing the load or the index wheel in this case. And this last icon is, is representing the profile that we wish the, the application to, to follow. This pane here with six tabs shows you some more of the details of the, of the, um, uh, results that are needed to uh, perform the motion profiles and indeed the, and the drive and the motors that we pick against those uh, results. And this large window here then shows me all the, the types of motors uh, and families that we can use from the Omron range. The icons can be uh, deleted, uh, rewritten uh, and added to um, from selection from the right hand pane. Let's get rid of that one. Over on here, I've got the Axis Toolbox. I've got a selection of icons that I can use to display the, the drivetrain for me. So, cylinder load, for example, and put back here. And then to join the icons together, move to the little square box, pull across, and join to the other square box. And that's connecting the output to the profiler. I can auto align them over on this side just to make them look a little bit neater. In the profiling box, double click. This is now going to describe the action of the, uh, the index wheel that I wish it to follow. I can add instructions here. There's trapezoidals, 
constants, ramps, cams, advanced trapezoidals. For the purpose of this, this brief uh, example, we'll just do a trapezoidal. Over on this side, it's going to show me the increment of position. I have that in degrees or rads, um, depending on what I want to, want to show. Uh, there was a six pocket there, so let's do 60 degrees. We want it to position in half a second. Let's have a dwell time of a second. And on this graph here, you can now see the representation of the position against uh, time the speed, the acceleration, the results are calculated at all times, whichever icon we go into or whichever pane we go into, then the, um, the windows are all updated uh, in, in real time. Um, so at the moment we've got uh, everything screen, that's, that's good. Um, so we haven't filled in the, the size of the table yet, or so the uh, any of the gear gear reducer um, parameters that we might need to do. But uh, looking at this this side on the devices selection, families um, from the Omron range, we can use the G5s, the One Ss. Uh, let's pick the One Ss. So deselect all. One S. And if you wanted to to pick different voltages or speeds breaks the safety margin you're allowing on the on the results tool can be uh, put into this uh, this area here um not good not good at the moment okay on these these um these motors we can click on one of the the buttons here and you'll see these fields are starting to populate so on the profile that we're following this is what the uh, expected results are that little trapezoidal profile Number three is shown as the results of the motor that I just clicked on here. What its performance is, its torque, its inertia. And four, column four, is showing me um, the performance related against the, uh, the drive and the motor data. So I can quickly quite see if that's in the line with what I wish the, um, the drivetrain to, uh, to, 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 to meet. In this case here, we've we've just gone with the standard default settings. Let's have a look at the, the cylinder load in a little bit more detail. So click on this icon. And over in this pane now, it's dropped down the, the data and the properties for the cylinder load. In here, this little three dot um, bullet point here, if I open that up, I can now start to fill in the diameters and lengths and volumes and materials that I might be using on that index wheel. So let's say it's a, a wheel of, of uh, 500 diameter. Perhaps it's got a little in, internal shaft of, of 30. And it could be made out of a material I can select, say aluminium. Okay. Oh, and you can see everything's gone red now. We've 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 actually put some some meat into the bone, and there's there's more uh, power that's going to be needed. Um, so alarms have come up all over the place, and um, we need to do something about it. So looking quite quickly at the the results, I can see that the motor performance is for speed is only half a percent at this moment in time. So we can put a, a gearbox in there to to help things out and and help try to to match the the inertias and the torques for that, uh, that drive chain. So go off to the gearbox. And here it defaults to a, a reduction ratio of one to one. So let's, let's try something a little bit different. Uh, let's try a reduction of, uh, of 10. Not quite. Let's try a reduction of uh, 30. And you can see some of the, the, the motors now are allowable. So let's click on that motor. And yeah, that looks good. Got some other um, tabs here we can look at. I can pick here and I can see with this tab in various legends here, it shows me what the motor can, can perform instantaneously and momentarily. 
and it tells me in green here what the action of the, the load is required. That's well within the boundaries of what that load is going to provide. So happy with that. It's ticked here. Uh, the torch is telling me these fields have been um, populated. What I can do now is save it away. I can also export it to the Sysmac programming tool if I wish to. So can we put the uh, the results into a folder? Then I can open up Sysmac Studio. And this is the programming tool for our controller range. Let's just make a new one. And then tools, import motor size in results. And there's the file I just saved from the motor sizing tool. Open. And here I can see the Ethernet connectivity. It's already created this, the motor tool, the access, the servo type, and in the access settings, it's imported in the rotations I need to achieve that figure of the trapezoidal we created. Degrees, number of pulses per revolution. The acceleration, deacceleration results. So this helps save time by being able to import the outputs from the uh, motor sizing tool straight to, to Studio. Okay, I hope that helps.